I'm here with Mr Ford, who's a consultant trauma and orthopaedic surgeon, and we're going to briefly talk about ankle fractures. So first of all, um, can you briefly outline if there are any classifications out there to describe ankle fractures? Uh, the classic classification for this is the Weber classification, which breaks uh, the fracture down into three groups, A, B, or C. Uh, A is the uh, least significant and C is the worst. And whereabouts in terms of the bony anatomy are we looking at in terms of classifying A, B, or C? So the essential part here is the syndesmosis, which is the join between the tibia and the fibula just above the ankle. There's a little, uh, I guess, ellipse on the side of the tibia that you can see where the two seem to be close together. And that articulation is, a, is an important one. It allows some shortening and rotation of the fibula relative to the tibia. But if it's disrupted, then the ankle mortis becomes very unstable. And so everything is in relation to that. So an A is below the level of that. Uh, a B is at the level of it, and a C is above it, uh, and really one's looking at the lowest extent of the fracture. So for example, a, a Weber B can extend above the syndesmosis, but has started at the level of it, and that's what distinguishes it in the way that a C is entirely above it, so quite different positions. And on looking at a few x-rays, that becomes apparent quite quickly. Okay, and would it be safe to say that we can uh, classify our management or treatment of each of these ABC fractures according to their location? Uh, very much so. So uh, a Weber A, for example, so below the level of syndesmosis is almost never treated operatively. Uh, some may put into a cast, some may not even require cast immobilization, but certainly wouldn't be expected to require surgery. So uh, a fracture at a level B, so at the uh, level of the syndesmosis sometimes needs surgery. If it's undisplaced and considered stable, which uh, the best judge of that is whether or not the patient walked on it before they attended for their x-ray. That can be treated satisfactorily without surgery, so just into a plaster. Uh, if it is displaced significantly or is thought to be unstable, then that will require surgery, whereas a Weber C always requires surgery. Okay, and uh, what about if this fracture, where, where, wherever it may be, is open? Uh, so then the treatment of that um, is, as with all open fractures, uh, and there's a podcast detailing that treatment. Um, commonly, these fractures are open on the medial side, so the medial uh, side of the ankle has come through the skin as the foot was uh, injured off uh, to the lateral side, um, and then would commonly be associated with a medial malleolar fracture. Um, when we talk about the classification A, B, and C, we also need to identify whether any of the other malleoli were involved. Um, we recognize the lateral malleolus, which the classification is based on. There's also a medial malleolus, uh, which is commonly pulled off at the same time, and also a posterior malleolus uh, to give you either an isolated, a bimalleolar, or a trimalleolar fracture. And so really the whole injury can be described very clearly by saying, for example, that it's a Weber B bimalleolar fracture. Most people would have a clear image in their mind of what that would represent on that description. So as a classification for both um, describing fractures and indicating management, it's quite a, an easy framework and we look pretty stupid as medical students if when asked in a trauma meeting, for example, we didn't know it. So I think it's something we should definitely pay attention to. Absolutely, and, and using the term malleolus is important as well. So when it's clearly an ankle fracture and people start talking about fractures to the fibula, then that usually indicates you don't really know what you're talking about. Brilliant, so we'd bear that in mind, certainly. And uh, we all know the multiple complications of patients with diabetes, but how does it relate to these type of fractures? Uh, so, interestingly, it has quite a big influence, and certainly if they have any significant level of diabetes, so requiring insulin or any evidence of end-stage uh, damage, such as renal failure or diabetic uh, neuropathy, uh, then this is also an indication that the bone will be slow to heal and their ability to recognize pain may be reduced even without uh, a full Charcot joint. Uh, and so instead of being in plaster for five to six weeks, they would tend to be kept in plaster for three months, recognizing that delay in healing associated particularly with diabetes. Okay, and um, so you, you mentioned that diabetes three months, but obviously a normal person fit in well much less time. Yeah, so five to six weeks would be the standard orthopedic dose for uh, one of these fractures. Um, if they were felt to be stable, and so for example, a, a 
Weber A or a stable Weber B could happily weight bear in their plaster. Uh, if they've required surgery, then generally the surgeon would have them restricted to just touch weight bearing, so just resting the weight of the foot on the floor without putting any more force through it until they come out of plaster at five to six weeks, uh, and then would be able to fully weight bear and have some physiotherapy to work on any stiffness. So just highlighting there the importance of asking uh, past medical history even when clerking a patient with an obvious fracture. Brilliant, so I think we've covered everything. Anything else? Uh, only really the outcome. The outcome generally is good. Um, most people return to their level of function that they were previously at. Uh, the only thing to caution them on is often the foot remains surprisingly stiff and swollen for a surprisingly long time. So many people would expect to come out of their plaster and be perfect. And in fact, it can often take a good six to 12 weeks before they really completely settle down uh, with that swelling and stiffness going. Brilliant. Thank you very much for talking to us. I think we've covered everything.